on screen. Yeah, all right. Everybody, it's Dave here, and I wanted to welcome you to Vlogmas Day 3, where we debut the first ever GMG spinoff show. Good Morning Gallahorn has now spun off to do two old bloggers, and <laughs> I, w- I wanted to introduce my co-host, that other old blogger, Mr. Darren Campbell. And as you saw on the run-up, Darren has been involved with writing about the Vikings probably longer than I have. And I started back in 2002. He was famous for his Grant's Tomb blog and also Kick-Ass blog after that. And since then, he has also done Darren Campbell's Deep Thoughts which has been fantastic. We have collaborated on a few written pieces together, but this is the first time we are collaborating in a vlog to talk Minnesota Vikings. How you doing, Darren? I'm doing awesome, Dave. I got to steal uh, uh, a saying from somebody we know very well, the, the barbecue king, <laughs> Reggie Adams. So, Skull! Let's go, oh. baby! Something, it says something like that. I don't know. He said, boom, boom, skull. Yes. Rah, I, for, I, I forgot the boom, boom. Terrible. Mm. And, and Reggie's fantastic, awesome cook. He and uh, our friend and compadre, Ted Glover, would do great to feed us all. Anyways, how are things? First off, I want to introduce, we talk about fellow uh, Climbing the Pocket Network. Jason Brown lives up in Canada. But you are a true Canadian, and you live way up there in Yellowknife. How's the weather up there? I see pictures of beautiful green, uh, nice lake, occasional gorgeous um, northern lights. How are things up there right now? 
We haven't seen uh, green in about two and a half months. Uh, we've, we've had uh, snow has been on the ground for like a month and a half, and um, it's still fall here, but but uh, it's a uh, that's a relative term, I guess, because it's uh, it's it, it, fall here lasts about like a week, and then uh -huh. it goes it goes right from summer to one week of fall to winter, well, and then it's like winter for six months. Have they put the ice or houses, longer? Have they put the ice houses on the lake yet? No, that's uh, well. There, there's houseboats that are on the lake, and they're on there year round. Uh, people live in them and do crazy shit like that, with no indoor plumbing and all that stuff. <laughs> and uh, and then uh, yeah, and then the, the the ice castle gets made. Well, they start making it as soon as the ice forms in the in the big lake, big Great Slave Lake. They start doing that now and then it goes until they keep on making ice blocks and stuff to make the castle and that gets finished sometime in like late february or something uh but it's been pretty mild here the, the like mild by yellow knife standards been pretty mild lately and uh, and uh yeah it's uh, i don't know how much ice they're actually uh, the ice is, isn't really that thick right now i don't think Ooh. which is rare for like even it's early unusual. december yeah yeah yeah, so it's pretty far north up here. It's not nearly as far north. It's not. It's not like Barrow, Alaska, north, but uh, but it still gets quite cold. Oh yes, and I know that wind comes down straight through North Dakota, hits Minnesota, all the way down the plains, and uh, that's normal. How do you? Yeah. How did you become a Vikings fan? I've been a Vikings fan since uh, I'm seventy nineteen seventy six. Not not very scientific a way I became a Vikings fan. I just I picked the helmet that I liked the most. It was it was down to the Chargers, the Eagles, and the Vikings, and I picked the Vikings. And good like uh, some 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 weekends, like two weekends ago when we lost to Dallas, I don't think that's a very good choice. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but yeah, but that, that's how there, there's a bit longer story to that, but it's too boring. But, uh, but yeah, it was all based on the helmet and the horns, baby. Sweet, sweet, sweet. And yeah. I know you started writing before I did or right about the same time. And you've been writing. It was later. Time. Was it? Yeah, it was later. It was like uh, I started 2007 with, okay. with the blog, the first blog. So it was before you. And I kept writing blogs till I think I think I stopped writing 2016, maybe something like that. Mm -hmm. But and, uh, yeah, and we good. miss them. But now you're back, and now you're live on video. Um, yeah, I'm not used to, used to seeing my face on the video, so it's kind of like uh, <laughs> jarring. You'll get and maybe used not to very it. pleasant for anybody who's watching either. <laughs> Oh. But uh, this this could be this will probably be a lot quieter than if Drew and Ted were on with you. But uh, I think we'll have a discussion night. anyway. We're doing that oh. live tomorrow night, same time, same bat channel, and with the pregame show. But right, you're going to be regular Thursdays through the month of December when Climb the Pocket Network blogs a live show, vlogs a live show, video every day of the month. And people can look forward to seeing your lovely mug talking from the Great White North, Minnesota Vikings. I put the glasses on today to help give you the intellectual look. Okay. Speaking of yeah. that, you had a question. Are we finally developing an offensive line? Yeah, I, I have been just wondering, thinking about that a lot the past few weeks. We would, we certainly weren't. I don't think most Vikings fans were saying that when the team went one and five. But after we've gone back on this four to one, uh, gone on a four to one streak, I really feel that. Uh, yeah, of course, you feel that way when you're winning more. But uh, we're on. I think Cousins is is going is on track to be sacked slightly less than he was last year, and the running game has been, I think, overall more effective. Obviously, Dalvin Cook has a lot to do with that because he's so awesome. But, um, I, you know, I think 
I liked what I think we've liked you and I liked what we've seen from Ezra Cleveland in the short time that he's been at guard, even though we both wanted him to play left tackle eventually. Yes. Uh, yeah, I think Bradbury has kind of certainly he had a rough rookie year, but I think he's looked better this year. And um, Brian O'Neill's always been solid from the get go. And Riley Reef has been, I think he's been playing outstanding all year uh, and he was a guy that a lot of us said oh he's an average tackle uh you know he's and that's Including the best me. he is yeah. yeah well well yeah on this yeah i'm right up there as when he'd give up some sacks last year and when khalil mack did the old punch and mm-hmm. <laughs> knocked him on his butt like two years ago you're like oh man how can come on reef like get it together but he's really gotten it together this year i'm sure I don't get to see the PFF grades and people poo-poo PFF a lot of times, but I'm pretty sure he must be our highest rated lineman, according to them, this year. It's close. Uh, or, it, yeah. it, it, it's up there if he's not. I want to say hey to Viking Jerome. He's joined us tonight. He is a stalwart watching these shows, and I appreciate it. You talk about Reef. I think Reef's motivation this year – was the fact that he had to take a pay cut and he may not be here next year. Now, his contract is through next year, but it gets expensive. So uh, I appreciate that he's now motivated and literally he is playing the best of his career. I also think Ezra Cleveland coming in, even though that first game was a little rough, he settled in and is doing nicely. Now he's been out the last couple weeks with a, ankle injury or whatever it was. Uh, but he's back at practice today and yesterday, even though it's limited. That questions, does Brett Jones get to sit back on the bench and become invisible again? Or how do you think the Vikings are going to work that? I don't think that there, David, there's any indication that they're, uh, that they're going to take Dozier out of his starting spot. Uh, we, we joke in the Gallahorn uh, Facebook page that you and I are a part of and, and some others and uh, I, some people who might be watching wouldn't know that that site. But we joke all the time about how Zimmer hates Jones and we can never under, we could never understand over the past two or three years why Jones got why they the Vikings got him why they cut him, why they bring him back. And I could never understand why Jones would come back either to the team that kept on cutting him. So, so I don't, for whatever reason, they don't seem to trust him and they do trust Dozier who, which I'd also don't understand because he's, he's the weak link on he's that line. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, however you look at it, whatever grades you want to look at the eye high test, the whole thing, he's just not a good guard and but we've got them there and they don't seem to the vikings don't seem to be interested in replacing him with with say brett jones so i think if cleveland comes back it's going to be dozier bradbury cleveland o'neill and reef that's and that's Mm -hmm. what they're going to roll with and i think that's what's going to happen i think brett jones's problem is, is his ability to get the second level and with that they have to restrict how they're running and since they've done that, he's played well because they have restricted, but also Dalvin Cook hasn't been as productive as he was a month ago when he was tearing everything up. Now, Dalvin Cook's also getting a lot of wear and tear on him. He says that's fine, but we'll yeah. see. Uh, Dave, you watched the, the – uh... <laughs> Dave, you watch the offensive line probably closer than I do. I'm one of those typical football fans who, like, wherever the football goes, that's what I'm watching. And that's not really always best for analyzing what the, what's with the team. But um, what do you – do you see anything that that Dozier does well? Um, like, what, what do you think that the Vikings see in him that they oh. would they would start him? Other than he's better than, like, Samia <laughs> – <laughs> even though they don't play the same guard positions. No, I, I think Dozier's the weak link. Um, if we get here, Ted's chimed in, Ruby's chimed in, and obviously Drew's chimed in. You'll see Ted and Drew tomorrow night. Dr. Um, Bunting. Uh-huh. Dr. Ruby Bunting. That's right. Um, and we got Donnie chiming in too. Now, I, I think Dozier's the weakest link, but I think they trust him more in the run game versus Jones. Because Jones can't get to that second level. 
we're going to take our licks. It means he gets run over in pass defense. Uh, it is what it is. Until Cleveland's back 100%, I think Cleveland's doing well at guard. I wanted him at left tackle, but he's doing well at guard. And if we keep him there the rest of the year, that's fine. He's still getting reps, and he needs to get reps. But speaking of rookies. To, yeah. Yep. Speaking of rookies. I was going to say it was good to, good to see that uh, we've been, again, many of us in the in the group that we're in have been moaning since 2016 about why can't the Vikings fix their offensive line? Why don't they devote resources to it? Or why don't Simmer and Spielman know what the fuck they're doing on, on with the offensive line? And it's been pointed out by a few other people like Ted that actually they have put resources into it the last like since 2017 mm-hmm. with the Remmers and Reef signings, with selecting Elf Line, which didn't work out, uh, you know, drafting O'Neill in the second, drafting Bradbury in the first, now drafting Cleveland in the second. It, they have devoted resources to it, and it, it, it looks like, based on the performance of the offense this year and, and Cousins being a – it didn't show up last week in, in the Carolina game, but previously it seems like Cousins was not pressured as much in the pocket as we're we've been used to seeing with some of these O lines and so it's good i feel it's good to see that the resources that we put into it especially some of those high draft picks seem to be we're starting to get maybe a semblance of a of an offensive line that's not brutal right that's at now, least adequate yeah yeah and you you said before i think you don't need like an awesome offensive line for an offense to be really good but they can't be terrible either like if you got an offensive line that's like middle of the road that can mm-hmm. sometimes be good enough and i would say especially with the weapons good. we have yeah yeah like how long do you need to hold up uh, on a pass block if you've got Justin Jefferson in there doing what he does. If you got Thielen to throw to, if you got Cook coming out of the out of the backfield on on uh, you know screen passes, you got Irv Smith who we never throw to. <laughs> and, well, not uh, enough. He's been and injured. And he's his back and his groin, but he, 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 you never throw to him. Uh, but it's yeah. So I finally I feel kind of good about the offensive line. Of course, the reckoning is going to come in, in a few years when you have to pay some of those guys. Well, like, we'll see about that. I think the record is like going to come a bit. Coming. He should be due for, like, they're going to have to think about extending him after this offseason almost, you would think. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think the reckoning is going to come here in a couple of weeks when we, well, at least at Christmas when we have to play the Saints. When we play Tampa, eh, we'll see. Um, but there's still some games to go that will, let's, let's see that offensive line improve. But speaking That's true. of the rookies, yep. speaking of yep. the rookies, you brought up is the two, 2020 draft comparable to the 2015 draft? And now in the 2015 draft was considered Rick Spielman's finest. And if you want to look, here it is. You have Trey Waynes, Eric Kendricks, Daniil Hunter, T.J. Clemmings, Michael, Michael Pruitt, and Stefan Diggs. Out of those first five rounds, the only one that's still not in the league is T.J. Clemmings. That was yeah, an shocking. awesome draft. Yeah, it was awesome. Even if you you ignore like everybody after Diggs, but to get Hunter, Kendricks, and and Diggs, mm-hmm. three studs basically. Yes. Yeah, that's that's a great draft. And Trey Wayne's. Ironically, he was like the first guy we picked, and he was okay. He was adequate. Like he He's didn't an really, adequate corner. He was adequate. He was adequate. Yeah. Great tackler. Great tackler. Not not so great in, in 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 coverage, but he was a starter for us. He was like you said, average, sometimes mm-hmm. solid, sometimes not so good. But um, so we got four real good contributors, and out of those four, three studs, like three of the best at their positions. Position. Yeah. With. That's that's and that's the best you get. Like most drafts, if if you look long term, because I remember we did a post on this. I think we collaborated mm-hmm. last year oh, where we were looking at on average the Vikings drafts they've been getting like on average about two contributors per draft, not right. two stars, two contributors. So to get three stars in 2015, that was a great draft. 
Right, and that and believe it or not, the the two contributors is about average for the league. Uh, we yeah. we compared the GMs on that dra- on that article, mm-hmm. and we'll have to redo that and refresh it come this season. But the 2020 draft, where we had 15 draft choices, that uh, yeah. how do you think that turned out so far? I mean, it's early; it's only their first year. They're rookies. It is early. Pretty clear that Justin Jefferson is is uh, pretty studly. Mm-hmm. If he's not going, if uh, I don't see, there's no fluke in what he's doing this year. I don't think. So that's a slam dunk right there. Great pick, and thank you, Philly, for picking Jalen Rager instead of Justin Jefferson. We really appreciate your contribution to our season this year, yep. um, especially after you screwed us in the championship game in 2017. Uh, yeah, Gladney, I like what I've seen. Sometimes he has struggled at times, but I think he's he's another guy. Like He's already shown he's a very good tackler. And I like that in my corners, especially a guy like him who plays in the slot a lot. So he has, and he's not getting, I don't find he's been getting beat as much uh, on the big passes in the past, like right. four I think or he's five improving. games. Yeah. Uh, Cleveland, like we, we both like what we've seen from him. Dantzler mm-hmm. has been hurt a lot. And I think that's really hurt his development this year. But um, so too early to tell. Wanham. We all like his hustle. We all like his efforts. There's no there's no dog in him that way. He's been reasonably productive. Um, I, more, maybe, I think more productive as a rookie than Daniil Hunter was, because Daniil Hunter's yeah, but, first year didn't start till later in the season, and then no, it was no. slow. It was a slow start. But yeah, but again, it, it's. Again, like when Hunter came in there, who did he have? Like there was Robeson and Griffin were there, and right. he had Tom, Tom Johnson, and uh, who played on the inside a lot. But Hunter, there wasn't a, a starting spot for Hunter, and he did end up with six sacks as his rookie year, and and came on at the end of the year. Wanham's got three sacks, and uh, sacks aren't everything for sure, right. but uh, but uh, but I think. We'll see, but I, I, we'll see. I think Wanham is promising. Lynch hasn't played much, hasn't done much when he's been in there. Die, I think he needs to like put on about 15 pounds. He missed like tw- uh, like a god awful amount of tackles against Carolina, but uh, and everybody else there seems like it's uh, pretty much a wash. But right. if if you got Jefferson a stud, and then you you can get um, two or three of the like if Cleveland ends up being good mm-hmm. as he looks like, Gladney or Dantzler or both pan right. out, That's... and Wanham keeps on doing what he's doing. Now maybe they're not all going to be studs, but if they're solid, you get a couple of studs and a couple of two or three solid contributors. That's a, a great draft too. It is. It is. It absolutely is. Um... Even if you had thirty picks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully the. Well, we got a lot going into the 2021 draft, too. Question yeah. there will be, do we pick a quarterback? And uh, we'll see. Are you you saying quarterback, like QB? Quarter. Yes. As in hmm. final replacement for the one and only Kirk Cousins. But, you know, uh, I Kirk, feel like Kirk Cousins uh, I'm so is conflicted. I'm so conflicted by Cousins. Cousins. I've talked about this before, and I've complained about him a lot this year too. Anyway, that wasn't really one of our topics, but no. he, he can he can look he can if look he, so good sometimes, and then like, and then like you said, when you really need him to look good, he doesn't look very good. Yeah, he gets the incomplete in the F. There you go, Drew. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but I I suspect Cousins is going to play out his contract with us at least. And we'll see what goes on from there. I would like to have a young guy ready to take his spot if necessary. But we'll see. Um, Jags. <laughs> the Jags play. <laughs> I, just, I just saw Drew comment about Tajay Sharp. <laughs> yes. He had all two targets this season. Um, and that pass this last weekend to him was yeah. beautiful. He should have caught it. Hit his hands. That's well, when, that's they, when you never get to play, when you never yeah. get to play, and nobody ever throws at you, like how are you well, supposed to be ready for that stuff? That's what practice is for. That's what practice is for. You got a receiver's taught if it touches his hands, he should catch it. Period. 
Mm. Um, yeah, if the line just doesn't suck. Yes, you're correct. Yeah. Um, looking forward, we play the Jags this week. Jags are one and what is it? Ten. Ten. Yeah. Oof. And they're playing for literally. I was listening to a podcast today, and they're talking about rooting for the Jets so they get the number one pick, and they do not want to win. Uh, they just fired their GM. They the fans want them to fire their head coach and their defensive coordinator, and the only one they want to keep basically is their wide receivers coach. Um, Don't fire them now. You've uh, lost ten in a row. Right. If, <laughs> if, if, if you're if you, if you want to get like the number one pick, you got to keep losing, right? You so keep Marone in there and everything else. <laughs> yeah. Um, it is, uh, what would you like to talk about that this particular game on? It's one of those that scares me. We, sh- on paper, we should win, but that's the ones that scare me. And it's at home and it's like the Dallas game. Yeah. Um, the saying I've had this year and uh, as for the Vikings has been they might not be able to beat everybody in the league, but they can lose to anybody in the league. And and so sure, like Jacksonville, numbers-wise, if you look at it, I think Jacksonville, only Dallas has given up more points than they have. Uh, I think only Chicago is, given, is scoring less than they have. Uh, they, they're terrible all across the board and uh so and not that we're all that shit hot either in a lot of areas but yeah this should be a game that we should win and not have to sweat it out too much but we will sweat it out it'll probably be close because our defense just isn't that good and it doesn't seem to matter other than the bears who we play the other team's offense moves on us and um so that's what I'm, I'm expecting a close game and your heart is going to be racing in the fourth quarter. Like yeah, it which has will drive me crazy. Yeah. Should, well, you should be used to it. You should be used to it by I now. Should be, but it's just, oh no. Oh, no. I, did, I, I did see that Glennon, Mike Glennon is going to start. They decided is, to start him over, over start. George Minshew. Yeah. Minshew. And the last right. time you remember the last time we saw him. No, we probably lost. It, it was a long time ago. We didn't lose. No. No, it was that it was 2014. He was playing for Tampa, mm-hmm. and that was the game Anthony Barr did the st- strip, strip sack, fumble, fumble in overtime. Yes, yeah. I remember. Yes, yes, yes. That was sweet. Oh, I'd it love was. to see another one of those. Obviously, Anthony Barr can't, but hey, get Wilson or Kendricks or. I'll take anybody on the defense to do that. Yep. Yeah. yeah, the uh, I think the the um it's been uh, for this game uh, and I the only Jacksonville amount of Jacksonville game that I watched was that Thursday nighter they played and and Jorts Minshew was was still quarterback and so that was quite a while ago. But they got that James Robinson who's kind of a nice runner. Mm-hmm. Uh, undrafted nice. rookie. Mm-hmm. He's been doing well, and um, and yeah, that's Short about it. <laughs> well, no, they've got a few more than that. Um, yeah, they got but DJ they Clark, say- which I think is uh, um, I'd have to look at the. Let me bring up the injury report real quick. DJ Clark. Oh, this is the Vikings one. Um, yeah, I didn't bring. I didn't capture the Jaguar one because it's about yay long. Um, but I think Clark was on it. You have uh, their whole defensive secondary is rookies, and some of those rookies have gotten hurt, and they're having more rookies back them up. Um, yeah, I know C.J. Henderson won't be playing. He's on the IR, um, so he's one of the, one of those rookies. Josh and Allen don't... and Edge and Miles Dak at linebacker are probably the only two on the defense that I would fear. And Allen's uh, out though. Is he? Allen's on. Yeah, he's not playing. Sweet. And he was the uh, and uh, and uh, they yeah the Jacksonville much like us they have no pass rush I think they have like twelve sacks and Allen had five of those yeah he was the best of uh, the bunch yeah 
So, so they are not good. They shouldn't be able to get any pressure on us, which uh, means that it should be a good day to throw the ball for Cousins again. It should be. That's exactly what I thought it, from the Carolina game, though, and they actually got pretty good pressure on us and shut Cook down almost completely. It was a strange mm-hmm. yeah. one. So it's kind of one of those things where I expect that we'll be able to move the ball quite well, but it seems like whatever I expect the Vikings to do, they just do the opposite. Mm-hmm. And I expect is, growth on the defense, and hopefully that happens too. Yeah, I, um, I I do I do hope that as some others have uh, said that if we are get a comfortable enough lead that Cook doesn't have to play the whole game and that we give him a little bit of a breather like in the fourth quarter and be able to use Madison or Boone or whoever and save him a, a little bit of a pounding because if we're going to do anything um, in the the next remaining uh, five we're not games. Even in- 500 yet. Wait yeah, till we get to yeah. 500 before we start talking that. Yeah, um, well, well, I'm not talking anything. I just, <laughs> I just, I just, I just want Cook a, a little bit fresher, or uh, even though he's not yes. worried about the pounding. You're right. Now, you also wanted to bring up turnovers. The Vikings have had, I think there was minus five. Jags are minus six. You never want to be on the negative side. But, you know, it is what it is. Well, another, yeah, I wanted to talk about that, but are you seeing, are you seeing anything, Dave, that the Vikings are doing on offense that's leading to the amount of turnovers that they've been having? Like we're, we're minus five or six, like you said, uh, which seems that's not good, but that seems even a little low because it's, because every game they've other than maybe the Packers game, they seem to have two to three turnovers per game. Sometimes it's not always, uh, and I consider the two block punts. Like, uh, like if, if you get your pot punt, you get your punt blocked. Is that a turnover for for the offense? You had the ball. I don't think it is. You're going to you're going to give it away. But Drew, you're watching. Can you answer that question? I don't know if that's a turnover or not. I know there was a lot of Drew doesn't. Hitters. Drew doesn't know the rules. Ask Ted. <laughs> Ted. Ted knows the rules. There's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of those turnovers came early in the season when Kirk Cousins was being bad yeah. and throwing interceptions yeah. like crazy. Um, last week you had the uh, Dalvin Cook fumble. I think that's his second of the season. Uh, I don't know kind of, if there's uh, the special teams ones, the muff kicks, Chad Beebe. Everybody's... Yeah, Everybody seems to be count. contributing now, right? Like mm-hmm. before it was Cousins throwing interceptions, and he's also fumbled a fair bit. But, you know, you had Rudy fumble against Chicago. I don't remember There's Rudolph it. fumbling fumbling ever. Uh, it, that pass, well, Thielen, that, was that, that pass that he kept, it, yeah, that, that pass that Thielen let through his fingers, which he probably catches a thousand times out of a thousand. And then, like Cook said, two fumbles the last two weeks. Yeah, Beebley on the on the punt. Uh, and there's been some weird stuff, but it just it's kind of seems like a very contagious thing. And because our defense is so weak, a lot of times it's uh, that's not something we can really afford to have. I don't think it's carelessness on the Vikings' part. Like I'm not seeing guys carrying the ball really loose. Uh, some of it's been just kind of seems kind of fluky um, stuff. There was a photographer in this last game, and I wish I could find the find the picture. I saw it once. Shows Chad Beebe, Beebe when he muffed the the catch. Yeah, it hit him, and he snapped the picture right when his eyes were closed. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a natural reaction. You get hit with a ball, you blink. But it just, it was the perfect snapping of, you know, the the camera, and it caught him full closed eyes like this. And not a good look. Not a good look. No, no. It's the same as that photo of uh, which game was it? It might have been the Tennessee game or something where, or earlier where Kirk had thrown it and mm-hmm. – and it was an interception. It might be Atlanta, and his eyes were closed <laughs> too, right? And you're like, who's he throwing to? Oh, a Falcon. Oh, thanks, buddy. But um, but yeah, it was um, funny that BB would fumble that one. And the fir- remember the first punt of the game, he got like tattooed, mm-hmm. and he uh, 
and he hung on to it. Like that was the one you'd think he'd fumble. Right. It, it, but, it happens. Catching punts is not as easy as it looks, even though Drew says so. It's not the ball's coming down and you got people rushing in your face. Yeah. Um, but I just, uh, I agree here I, with Donnie. Yeah, I, Let's enjoy and uh, seeing the rookies mature. And they are this season. And I do like that because next season, when we get some of the veterans back, especially on defense, it's going to help. It's going to help tremendously. And it's going to help this year. And they're learning. And Hey, maybe they learn enough to get beyond, you know, these last five games. But we're not going to talk about it because we're not at 500 yet. No, we shouldn't talk about it until it actually happens. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I agree with Donnie, and that's the same thing that, that Tony the Machine Bell was talking about a couple of weeks ago, too, about forget about the playoffs. Vikings aren't making the playoffs. But so s- settle down. Enjoy the the young guys that are in there playing, the first and second year guys. Enjoy their development. Enjoy seeing Jeff, Justin Jefferson torch veteran corners oh, and, and make them. And hopefully, and the yeah. And Justin Jefferson may beat may beat uh, Randy Moss's records, and that would be something. Yeah. What a lucky, what a lucky draft choice. So thank you. Philadelphia for choosing Rieger. That's right. Mm-hmm. They, yeah. So the, that that's definitely something that's. Uh, if the games aren't going well, that's what I'm keying on too. Is what's Wanham doing? What's how's Gladney doing? Has Dancer made a play yet? How's JJ looking? How's Cleveland looking? Those guys that are young and are the future. Yep. Uh, are, are they are they good future for us or are they just kind of middle of the road future? Right, and and most of those guys are improving, and that's what we want to see. And they yet yeah, and they wouldn't have, and, and it's not good, but it's good. And I mentioned it a few times uh, as well that uh, if things had gone maybe the way we would have liked them to gone this year, where the Vikings were more successful, and there hadn't been some injuries, and this isn't a good thing really, but uh, a lot of those guys wouldn't be playing squat. And we and we wouldn't know what we had in them, and the Vikings wouldn't really know what they had in them. But it, because they've been forced into playing, we are getting. I think they're definitely the coaches, however long they last, uh, have, I think have got a lot a good enough amount of tape that they have some idea of where they are with this young group of players and where and it, it's going to help with all draft selection next year or in the in the spring because you'll know i think you'll have an even better idea of where your what your needs are you don't really have to guess that you need another defensive end well we do we do need a d- defensive end somebody who can rush the passer right. <laughs> yeah <laughs> we need but, some help there well we'll see with that have you got any last words for tonight because we're going to wrap up this show Oh, thank God. <laughs> I couldn't talk anymore. Uh, that might seem hard to believe. Um, yeah, I guess the last thoughts is this Jaguars game is not going to be probably one that many people are going to watch other than the fans of the Jaguars and the Vikings. But it'll... I, I, I'm like you. I, I don't. I don't know if worried is the right feeling because I worry every Vikings game. And how about apprehensive? Yeah, definitely because they have the Vikings haven't been very good at home this year. Mm-hmm. They seem to play worse at home than they have on the road, which is a real switch in 2020. And uh, I, I don't. I don't fans, but yeah. Yeah, maybe. But um, I think that if you. Um, if the, this the, the Jaguars game is is one of those classic Viking games where they're just they should win and they if they but they're they they're not going to overlook them but they're just going to do that Viking thing where they do not play their best and this this team is not good enough to not play its best and win. Well, I agree there. Now, my final words is I want. I've uh, tell Drew I have talked to Mike Zimmer today. He's going to put over that forty we've talked about, but we'll see. 
Anyways, with that, <laughs> tomorrow night we have GMG pregame show live, part of Vlogmas 2020, where we let's get live, and you'll get to see Ted, Drew, and Rhino join me for that. And with that, we want to say good night, go Vikings. And skull, everybody! Skull! Skull, baby! Boom, boom! I got that all mixed up. Thank you for watching or listening. As always, if you like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications. And if you're listening to the podcast, please rate us on your favorite aggregator. Skull, everybody.